Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mixtape Podcast. Uh, today with me is Musharraf Ali Farooqi. He is once again back on the podcast uh, to discuss a recent series that he has done uh, in collaboration with Gets Pharma. Uh, these are a series of uh, kissas which are in bilingual language. So let's just uh, dig in and talk to him about how the series came about. Uh, welcome back to the podcast, sir. And my first question would be, ke how obviously you are known for, you know, uh, working on uh, Kissa, ka jo ek, humara literary format, hai, uspe aap, uh, you're known for that work. But what uh, what made you decide to work on this series, jo ek short story sort of format? Hai? Uh, thank you for having me again on your program. Uh, it, this uh, program was, uh, uh, this series was launched during the days of the pandemic when I was kind of homebound and just <laughs> going crazy like everybody else, uh, not knowing what exactly how to, how this will pan out and what we can occupy our, ourselves with. So I decided to uh, read shorter Kisars because I have been translating longer Dastan, but I had not really paid, uh, read uh, the smaller Kisars in great detail. So I started reading them and I thought there would be a good project for translation because they could be more easily done. Uh, and you know, one could do more of those uh, in the time that it would take to translate a longer sort of work like the Dastan or the Thilisan. So I started doing that. Um, I translated a number of those Kissas and I made some interesting discoveries, stories which connect to older stories. Um, like uh, there's one story, which is uh, translated in English as the victim of malice. Uh, it uh, connects to an older Punjab legend of Raja Rasalu. Not exactly, but you know, the story has certain similarities and it mentions the word Salkot, which again is the region known for, uh, uh, for that legend. So um, those discoveries were rewards in themselves. The translation was... Uh, is something that I'm interested, um, I've always been interested in. And the, the pistols themselves were very, were very entertaining and there were many shades of pistols. Some were very tragic, some were great fun, some were uh, very extraordinary in the, in the narrative d- devices they employ in how the story uh, develops. So um, in many respects, it was, um, it was an education, was uh, uh, an adventure in reading and uh, translation. So uh, then I approached Gats Pharma, uh, who have done a lot of work in the cultural domain, and they're very interested in these areas in education. And uh, I proposed to them that we launch this as a series to safeguard our uh, literary classics, because uh, again, um, there's no, there's no literature that is disconnected from its past. So, uh, but unfortunately we, uh, in Urdu, um, and also a lot of uh, literature that's being written in English uh, from this, from this region, uh, is disconnected, is not, never refers to uh, um, any of these, uh, any of this literature. So uh, it's, it's just a very strange sort of phenomenon where a literature New contemporary literature is growing and uh, we are looking at the West, but a lot of things that the West has um, in terms of fantasy, in terms of uh, experimentation in uh, narrative devices, we have uh, a great variety of. So uh, it was uh, that, uh, that was the impetus and uh, Gets Pharma very kindly agreed. And that's how the, the series came about. So, so uh, just because obviously you shared, you know, the idea came during the COVID where I think you, you're you one of the, those few people who ended up doing something pretty productive out of it. Uh, but uh, obviously a lot of research would have gone, uh, you know, in, kiss, in behind these kisas because not, not just in the uh, form of translation, but to find these because this uh, series is not the... Uh, does not have those common kisas that we know through oral uh, 
history ke kisi version mein these are very unique kisas most of them i was reading for the first time so just share how what was that research process like and what resources did you explore and maybe if uh, anybody else is interested are those resources available in pakistan you know some libraries what what all went into the, that research of yours ji so uh, most of these resources are available on uh, free websites like archive.org and other places uh there are many university libraries that have scanned classical works they are available the only thing is that there is no context to to these stories so unless somebody is looking for them there is no way of uh, finding ke bhai acha let me list uh, although you can do a search with qissa or with dastan it will give you a number of uh, those works but to put them in some sort of a context to put um to write about the writers or authors of those pieces or the known uh, transcribers ke bhai it's an old kissa but somebody else has written a new version of it in the 18th century maybe it was several centuries old but 18th century was the first time when it was written down in urdu so there were um, there was that kind of work i was fortunate to have the help of uh, prof ali shai sahab who is a urdu scholar a dastan scholar of a scholar and he Uh, very painstakingly gathered all the details of the authors uh, which are included in the in the uh, the editions that you have in the urdu edi- urdu editions there are details about those authors whatever is known about them and he's an expert in that so he has gathered from wherever he could uh, all that information which is current and then i was very fortunate to have the help of professor abdul rashid of jamia delhi he um is a, a very well respected urdu scholar and lexicographer so he helped with the uh, preparation of a kind of glossary for many of the words which were used in the pistas because many of these words even if you're reading them in urdu you find them that you know you no longer know what what does it mean khurtno ke jute you know what does that mean it's a certain kind of shoe that was made in a particular place so uh it's stuff like that i was help uh, i was help by uh, professor abdul rashid saab uh, later one of the uh, one of the pistas which i translated i was help in the persian language translations of the verses by professor ahmed mafu saab he's also at jamia uh, in delhi and uh, so it was uh, i was very fortunate to have these resources who helped me um with some aspects of the translation whether it's a difficult phrase or a difficult thing that was to be translated uh and all of us constantly talk about and discuss how how varied and how extensive is the world of urdu classical literature and what we can discover in it if we really you know decide to sit and start thinking about it so it's a great feeling we are all very excited about the pistas the literature and the possibility and the chance of uh, its uh, spread and renewal and revival thanks to uh, guest pharma uh, so what you just said and also something uh, we connect that to something you said earlier as well that you know uh, no literature you know can exist without its uh, historical or you know its its past uh, uh, connection Uh, so how do you see the relevance of this collection of kissas because they were pretty uh, interesting and obviously uh, when you read it you obviously get a, a lot of insight into you know the cultural richness that we our storytelling has but how do you see uh, their contribution or how they stand and how even they can maybe in some way help you know the current literary landscape and sort of build that lost connection that that we feel that there is so um, all i can say in this regard is that um, we um, i did a number of uh, lectures at uh, universities talking to young people some of whom were given the books in advance some of whom discussed the story while we while we uh, had a discussion and what the nature of those stories were and uh, the overwhelming sentiment was that, that these are very interesting stories so if so there is nothing dated about these uh, great story that and of course <laughs> this is the benchmark of a great story that it's never dated you can yeah. read it in any time 
and by any uh, any person, it has a certain resonance for that person. So uh, there is that that these stories are appeal to a very young people to to the young generation who are in their twenties studying at the universities. It appeals to them. So we have that approval at that level. Uh, maybe they find it difficult to read it in the original Urdu, uh, but they were able to read it in English, and those who could were, were able to read it in Urdu and enjoy it at the same level. So that is that is, I think, the first step. Does a story have from from a culture the resonance in it in a much later period of time, in a contemporary time, and it does. Uh, and obviously, um, you just mentioned that you know the students that you reached out to, while some of them might have issues, you know, reading Urdu, uh, they were able to enjoy it in in English. So, was it the reason that you decided to sort of you know um, make these series bilingual, or was was it to just reach out to a much wider audience internationally? Yes. Yeah, so, um, always uh, since I have started translating in the late. 1990s, since I started translating uh, Urdu classical literature or some some contemporary works, my aim has always been to share them as widely as possible. So this these these works are uh, meant uh, to uh, are outward. Um, every translation effort is you know just to find more audience with it. Uh, Unfortunately, because uh, the classical language of some of these works is difficult, it is easier for people even in Pakistan to read the story in English because they have most of the time they've been educated in English. So they find it harder to understand the classical Urdu idiom. But uh, this translation was not just meant for Pakistan. It was meant for the world. And... Uh, in April, these um, six of these stars are coming out as an anthology from the University of California Press. So that is also going to be uh, yeah. so, so speaking of, uh, you know, you obviously uh, shared that obviously the the time era when these were the the these kisas are originated from. Obviously, are even the Urdu language has sort of transformed, and obviously there's a hint of Persian as well. And you also mentioned that, you know, there were a couple of people who helped you, you know, develop the, the glossary and, you know, the entire context. So the Urdu versions of these books, are these like uh, closer to the original format or were they also redone in the modern Urdu language? No, they were, they are completely like, uh, see, if, so this is an important uh, principle of editing a classical work, that you keep the original as it is. And you just make certain changes which are either required by the way we write the language now, a particular word. Uh, for example, I'll give you a very simple example. The word us, that, you know, uh, us shas, us ladke ko palana. Um, so in the older tradition, uh, instead of putting a pesh over alif to create the sound us, they would write alif wow scene, us. So, so the nature of editing done for these works is just that, you know, we change alif vow scene to us, alif pesh scene, so that the modern convention is retained, but the word itself is not changed and an old spelling is retained wherever uh, possible. So very little editing in the sense, uh, but it is as it was in the original. So there's no change in the story, no words have been replaced, something like that. that that's very interesting. Uh, so just share which one of, I know it's uh, it's sort of a very uh, common and I think a very hard to uh, answer question, but which one is your favorite? Or maybe if you don't have one favorite, just say, mm -hmm. uh, share which one you enjoyed the most translating. So the smallest or shortest of these itself is the surprise that is great fun because it's about uh, a, a bunch of thugs who try to yeah. steal a uh, soldier's uh, prize bull, which is received in lieu of payments. And then he gets even with them. So it's a great uh, short read, very fun read. Uh, but again, there are two other pistas uh, which I uh, found really moving. One was Pitsa Maktule Jafat, which I discussed, and uh, Pitsa Azar Shah Saman Rukhwano, which is uh, again a very layered narrative 
about the power that stories have of healing people, of uh, of of uh, carrying stories within them. Um, so is it, is this set complete or is this an ongoing series that you will get if there are more interesting stories from that genre? Because obviously there's a lot of, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of untapped stories that we don't know and maybe we, you discover later on. So do you want to like keep it part of the series or is this a complete uh, set that's been done? No, there will be, there will be six pistas every year. So six in original Urdu, six in, mm -hmm. and six translation of the same pistas. We have uh, completed, uh, we launched the first catalog of six pistas with their translations. And this year we'll be launching another six and next year uh, another six with the translation, inshallah. So you will see that uh, all these, uh, and, and there's no shortage of these pistas. I can assure you that uh, if we sit down today and start translating all of them, it will take ages before the complete pista literature is exhausted. There are so many of them and all of very good quality. And I think this is this is becoming a is going to become a very interesting and ongoing uh, you know collection of storytelling, short stories telling. And I think we very bad that a generation, a new generation will get to you know read them. I'm also I have some cousins who are interested in reading. I've sent English versions to them, and they're they're pretty happy and they're amazed about uh, this sort of storytelling. And they find I think um other they find it. The connection up the West has that sci-fi element to it, fantasy wala. Our historical fiction, I think, does have originally has that element in with jinn stories or ye that we I think should tap in uh, a lot more. Uh, sir, please uh, plug in um, where can people buy it? I, I know we're gonna put in links up the publishing house. Hai, or uh, availability here? We have, uh, we have these uh, stories currently available at kitab.com.pk and that's the main resource from which we are selling them. So if you order at kitab.com.pk on the website, and I'd appreciate it if you could kindly mention the link when, when you post this, it will help people uh, get that we supply all over Pakistan and should be no uh, problem getting the You guys ship, ship internationally as well? Um, we are not uh, shipping this bunch of pistas because uh, they are going to be published in the US uh, in, the, in, in March. So we don't have the rights for that uh, at this point, but we can ship the Urdu pistas. Not the, not the first six, but after, the, after these first six, that this year's catalog will be able to ship anywhere without an issue. Okay, and surely we will plug in uh, the, pub, uh, the link where people can actually directly click and find where they can buy it. Uh, so other than these uh, kisas and obviously the ongoing series, what anything else you are working on? Should we be looking out for a new book? Yes, I'm working on. I started work on my new book, which was delayed because of number of uh, uh, pandemic-related uh, uh, interruptions. Yeah. And now I've started work on that again. So hopefully I'll have something by the end of this year. So and definitely uh, looking forward to it. Always love your form of storytelling. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back whenever your next book is out. Thank you so much, Patma. Take care. Thank you.